Okay, how are we doing out there? First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Illuminous 4K screen paint using ambient light rejection technology gain times seven and eight. All right, so I am recapping on this. I've done this already before, but the reason why I'm recapping on this because I had someone come into the YouTube channel and say, hey, look, a good way to end all the doubters, and I guess I'm not doing enough, but a good way to end all the doubters is that the material that you had draped over the side of that 120 inch screen that material was uh was was baggy it was hanging it was loose so what i did was i actually built me a screen using that uh, material that i got from amazon it's nice and smooth all right that's our technology painted here this is our technology behind it and this is my technology on the motorized projection screen there's also my technology there now to cure all the doubters because I've done demonstrations on levels that most people don't even do. But let's go a little farther. Um, never back down from a challenge. It didn't challenge me, but very interesting comment. So I followed through on it. So what I did was I went out and I built myself a screen using the material. Now it lays nice and smooth. As you can see, nice and smooth. There's no wrinkles. There's no lines in it. Perfectly flat. All right. So there's no excuse for any doubters. Now. As I said before, in my past, um, yeah, I got to clean the floor. In my past, I have developed light gray screen paint. I've done it. You can go back to my old demonstrations when I was making paint out of a small little room, and I was basically designing light gray screen paint because I didn't know anything about black technology. I had never studied it, never worked with it, never even heard of a black screen. You know what put me on the path of a black screen? Black diamond. When I saw a black diamond demonstration, I didn't know a screen could be that dark and produce images like that. And I was fascinated by their technology. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to develop myself a jet black screen that's going to be darker than the black diamond. And that's where the Digital One uh, 4K Crystal Onyx came in. That was the first one black technology we've ever started working with. And then later on, I started developing other stuff and I started advancing it and looking for higher white levels and stuff like that. So as you go on, you start improving and making it better and better and better until we just got to the point where I developed a technology that had the ability to produce higher white levels. Now, once we started developing a black paint that produces a higher white level, then that means there was no need to design anything else in between because it pretty much covered both sides. Now, as I said before, when that particular screen paint, I think it was called 4K Black, when it was developed, it was literally jet black. The problem there is anyone could come in and mimic it, which means there was a hard time telling whose paint was who. So this time around, and I learned from experience from somebody mimicking a demonstration on their YouTube channel, and they put everyday black paint in there, and they did this uh, demonstration. We learned after that, from now on, when we develop any form of black technology, it will have its own signature code and a black shade, which means we have a customized pigment that we drop in this product or any kind of product. And what it does is it changes that particular color tone to a very interesting signature color tone that's very hard to duplicate. But that's not the only thing that's in it. There's other things in it too that makes it to be have the ability to be able to pull images outside and all that stuff, but I can't tell you about that. All right, so let's show you the signature. So if you look at the motorized projection screen, this is the one I use in a lot of demonstrations. This is the technology coded on it. If you get up close, you'll see that the black border is jet black. The coating itself is black, but it's a different shade of black. All right, now if I back up and bump in front of my projector, my projector, you see how they all blend together? It's black, but it's a different shade of black. It's a custom coating. Now, this basically allows us to be able to see if, say if I'm doing a contract, business contract, and these guys are over there trying to reverse engineer my technology. I've had this happen before. I can go over there and I can pour out my paint right next to whatever they have over there. And if it doesn't match that color code, we know. That's how you have to protect yourself when you design this kind of stuff. You have to make yours different from everyone else's because somebody can easily come in and say, hey, look, it's the same thing. All right, so let's go upstairs. Let's knock our lights out um, like we did the last time. And that way we can show you the white levels and so forth. Um, last demonstration I will be doing 
because I've got orders. I got a bunch of orders that popped up this morning, about 20 or 30 of them. I'm going to be, I'm going to be buried in orders in the next couple of days. So I'm not going to be doing any videos. All right. So here on this side, this is the Amazon screen right here that I purchased. Uh, all smoothed out, as you can see. This is our technology here. You see it all blends together. This is a Supreme 8 True Amulite Rejection screen that has the ability to pull higher white levels. Now, if you notice, and I tell people, because people sometimes do this just a nitpick, it doesn't make a difference if the surface is draped over it. It's still all going to react the same way. Tightening a screen to fit a frame is not going to change the picture quality at all. It pretty isn't. It isn't going to make it brighter. It isn't going to add more color to it. It's still going to be the same no matter what. And okay, let's go over here to the all white screen saver. I have that up here too. We'll pull up the all white screen saver. Hmm. I know I just hit that, right? Okay, my phone's a little slow. All white screen saver. So when I got, keep in mind, not only do I do demonstrations, when I do demonstrations against a gray screen or a white screen, the first thing a person's going to say, of course, your screen's going to pull better contrast because it's a black screen. So that's why I do demonstrations on beautiful flowers and scenery to show that the screen can pull a high enough white level to be able to blend in to a light gray screen or a white screen. Now, when I'm dealing with a black screen, because there are people out there who develop black screen paints and black projection screens, people are going to ask me, what is the difference between your technology and theirs? Well, ours have a, well, our screens have an interesting signature color to them, and they also can pull a higher white level. So if you're going to test out and you're going to design a black screen, you're going to have to be to show higher white levels. Just like if you're going to develop a light gray screen paint, a gray dark gray screen paint, or a white screen. Well, I don't know why you would do it with a white screen. That doesn't make any point, point at all because a white screen, it's automatically going to pull a hot, high white level because it's white. It just can't pull contrast. But let's just say we do a white screen, we do a gray screen. You know, any one of those screens, what do those screens have to prove? They don't have to prove white levels because that screen can automatically generate a white level. When someone's doing a demonstration on a light screen and they're showing you how bright and beautiful the picture is, that is a given because the screen produces high white levels on any level whatsoever. That proves nothing. What the proof comes in is can the screen produce contrast? And I've banged my head on this a hundred thousand times. I keep seeing the same videos over and over and over again. I'm sorry, I'm not going into a rant. But think about it on my end. If someone's saying, look how bright and beautiful the colors are. It's a white and light screen. Of course it's going to produce high and white colors. That's what it's designed to do. What you need to ask yourself is, how's the contrast? Am I going to see 100% black on that screen? Now, same questions you guys come at me about. You got a black screen, what are the white levels like? You know the contrast is going to be good, it's a black screen. That's a given. Black is always going to produce better contrast than any other, any other, any other screen. But how are the white levels going to play out? And there you go. You have to be to back that up. So next time you're watching a demonstration of somebody doing a light gray screen or a white screen, and they're showing all these beautiful colors across the screen, that's going to happen either way. You want to see how the screen is going to react to contrast. Let's put in a Starfield demonstration. Let's put in a Batman movie, something with dark contrast to it. Let's put in anything, something dark. Let's put in a black background of a screensaver. And let's take a black piece of paper and let's stick that in the middle of the screen. And let's do this with all the lights on. Let's do this with the lights off. Let's do this outside. Let's do this with different forms of projectors. Let's do this with 1100 lumens. Let's do this with 3500 lumens. I even have a laser and LED projector. And I have laser up in here. Do it on every level you can think of. See how it reacts. Yeah, that's what I keep telling y'all. You, you gotta, 
You got people out there that'll do the same demonstration over and over and over again. I'll go out there and show you a bright, a screen with a different color, light, light, light gray screen or white screen to say, look how beautiful the colors look. That screen's designed to generate white light. What you want to ask yourself is, how's the contrast on the screen? And then for those of you who ask me, can you get closer to the screen? There you are. As close as I can get. I've seen this screen on Amazon. Right here. There's a couple of them on there. And they're, they, they're, they're made overseas. So what they did was they took a black piece of fabric. They took a bunch of pictures behind it and photoshopped it and said, hey, look, this is an all black screen. You can have super contrast. Everything, right? That's what they tell you. Now, when you get the screen, of course, black is always going to produce contrast. That's a given. It's going to happen. Just like somebody telling you that I have a light gray screen here and a white screen. It's going to produce super white levels. It's going to produce that anyway. It's a white and gray screen. It's just a given. But the problem you have here is that when you buy that black screen from Amazon or whoever's making it, and you put this up on your wall, and you hit this on a any scene that involves contrast, you will see the contrast. The problem is when you watch something that involves high white levels, you will come up with a dirty image because the screen can't produce white light. Now you see, this is supposed to be gray. Over here, it's not coming up, it's just dingy, dirty. That's what you don't want. <laughs> it's me humming in the background, people. That wasn't me humming in the background. I'm sitting here in the dark, it's time to move. So here we are, we have a snow glacier. Sorry, there's no sound. I don't think there's any sound in this video. I probably unplugged the sound bar, knowing me. This is a snow glacier. I had somebody use black paint one time. They painted the entire wall with black paint. And the image came out dirty and muddy. And they said, what am I doing wrong? You're using black paint. It's not designed. Black paint is not designed to generate white light. It's paint. That's it. It's just black paint. That's all it is. It has to be something different to it in order to be able to get it to generate white light. That's why I like doing these demonstrations because I have people who come up there and say, oh, it's just using everyday black paint. That's what it is. You know, there's no difference in it. It's just everyday black paint. That's all he's using. Well, if you take everyday black paint, then I guarantee you do the test yourself and you put on a snowstorm, I guarantee it comes out looking just like that. I guarantee you. But then when they see the coating, the color of our technology, what it looks like, and it has an interesting code color to it, they go, oh, it's different. Okay. So you can paint this on anything you want. You get, think, keep in mind, this is a motorized projection screen coated with it. That's a motorized projection screen coated with the technology. This was a $68 uh, eBay projector. I paid, I paid, yeah, I got it on eBay. I paid 65 bucks for it. This is a motorized projection screen. If you're curious to see the demonstration, I'll put in a link. I'll put the demonstration of me painting this screen the, when, I, when it was dried and done. And I want to show you something. You see that big screen out there, that giant frame out there sitting in my backyard? That frame was built. I built that frame. For this projection screen i have videos outside of me watching sports at around four o'clock in the evening so you can paint over your wall with this you can paint over your wall you can paint your fixed frame screen you can paint material this right here is the same material that i purchased off amazon the screen was claiming to be a black screen it's the same material now our coatings on it look at the difference between it with our coating on it you can paint this on anything you want paint it on your wall Paint it on your ceiling, paint on anything you want. You can spray it, you can roll it. It's a one coat application. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a paint on demonstration very soon. This right here, because a lot of people have been asking about plexiglass. All right, so this right here is 
that uh, kind of uh, ceiling tile that they use for um, you put up in your ceiling and it's where the areas where you have lights at. So you can actually put this right over top of that ceiling tile. Okay. I'm sorry, if, if I'm not answering your messages right away, I do apologize because on my end, um, the image just fades away. After someone types it, it gives me only a few minutes to read it and then it fades away. So if I don't answer your question, I do apologize. Um, I will come in later on if I did miss any questions and I will answer you and send you messages or videos or whatever you want um, to help you out or whatever question you're asking. I'll help you out with that. No problem. Um, if you're asking about lumens on the projector, if I miss your question, I do apologize. It's just on my end on the screen, it's there and it disappears because I'm doing this on my cell phone. Oh, can you turn the projector off and show the wall images, please? Oh, you're going to turn the projector off. Well, like I said, the paint is different black. Okay, let me go over here. Hold on. Let's uh, let me switch my projector off. Or you want me to switch it over to the wall? Which one you want? There you go. It's black. It has a different coating of black. Oh, you want to see the wall versus our technology? Oh, yeah, I love doing that. Perfect. Yes, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, let's put in a color demonstration. Lots of color. So I can show you where a black screen will produce better color than a white wall. Oh, I love doing these. Trust me. You basically, my friend, I got videos doing this all day long. I can show you an archives. Matter of fact, I can show you videos outside. But let's do that. Uh, don't send me challenges, man. I got demonstrations on levels that you wouldn't even believe. I got screens that sit outside in the snow and I do demonstrations off of 1100 lumens. All right, let me power back up my machine. Keep in mind, my projector is 4300 lumens. So 4300 lumens Sony projector. So it's a VPL F, uh, H, uh, 30 projector. 4300 lumens, 1920 by 1200. All right, so let's go pull up some fun here. Now I got lens shift on my projector which allowed me to be able to move the screen over to the white wall. Let me see, that's going up. This one should be going up, down. Let's get one going over. All right, let's move this one. This has to be the lens shift for this one. Come on, baby. All right, there we go. Hold on. Lens shift. I'm trying to get my lens shift to move. Need I say any more? So for those of you on white screens and you think your screen's more superior than black, that's what you're getting off your white screen. Mind you, my projector is 4,300 lumens. So 4,300 lumen projector at 1920 by 1,200. We move it a little more. My res on my projector is 1920, 1920 by 1200. It's a WXGA. And this is with the lights on, lights off. Now, let's switch it over and let's show you what our technology is designed to do. Our screens are designed to produce images in fully lit environments. So let's light it up. Something that a lot of screens can't do. Now that's with color. Now, let's have some more fun here. Let's go over to, hmm, what do we got here? I got so many things to select from. I love these. Let's go over to, uh, hmm. I wanna do something where I can give you more of an impact. That's what I wanna do, give you something more of an impact. Now keep in mind, as I said before, that 
a black screen's white levels are going to be a little bit lower than a white screen because white screens are designed to pull high white levels where a dark gray, a light gray screen is going to have a problem having the ability to produce contrast. But the difference between our technology is it has the ability to do both at the same time. So let me try to find me a proper video. Here we go. I'm going to go with the OLED. Now, keep in mind, an OLED background, because I was playing this video previously. Let's go back a little bit more. An OLED background is designed to be black. You can't see it on a white screen. Let's go bring this back a little bit more. Let me see if I can bring it back some. There we go. So keep in mind, an OLED background, anytime you see an OLED demonstration, the background of OLEDs are black. You can't see it because white screens can't produce contrast. Oh, a little fishy just went to the very edge, came back. There we go. Now, let's take our lights out. I gotta hurry up too because my I, I went over my data plan on my cell phone because I don't do a lot of um I don't do a lot of uh, uh um what do you call it I don't do a lot of live demonstrations on my phone. Can you see the red there? Let me see. get that to pause just for a minute. See the difference? You got a 43. Now, mind my projectors, if you have a very powerful projector, it's 4,300 lumens. This is how much you lose from your projector when you hit a white wall. So you can see this. You're not getting. Some people will tell you that you're getting a um, you're getting a um, a brighter image. You're not getting a brighter image. You're getting a washed out image. That's what you're getting. That's like an orange, and that's a red right there. So I just want you to see that. Now you see how bright the colors are on the screen. That's because the screen produces high white levels. You have to have high white levels to do this because the screen comes out dirty if it doesn't. Let me show you something real nice. I'm going to go back. I'm going to bring my projector back in full view really quick. Let's bring it all the way back over. Uh, this is why I love lens shift. Because with lens shift, you can just pull your projector back over. I love that option, man. The first time I got a projector with lens shift, it was goody goody gumdrops all day long. Kind of makes you think. I mean, I'm not going to ramble on about this, but it kind of makes you think when all those when people were going out saying nasty things about my product. Um, you know, I never did any live demonstrations before, you know. So, you know. You know, I know what my technology looks like. I have my screens out back. I have my neighbors come over and they watch movies with me on my screens, you know. So I know what my technology is capable of doing, you know what I mean? It's a shame that I just have individuals that basically just don't like what I do. And they basically want to slander me on any level you can possibly think of. So this is why I started doing live demonstrations because a buddy of mine who came over, he was like, well... You know, why don't you start doing live demonstrations? Show people the same thing that I'm seeing right here. Just do it in live time. And I never thought about that. And that's why I'm over here doing these videos like this. So you can see the same thing that I see. You know, there's no way someone can say, well, he's dockering it up or he's uh, changing the brightness on his camera or any of that stuff. They can't say that anymore because I've got live videos right there. I've got a nice little uh, selection of live videos uh, showing what the technology can do. Let me show you. We'll go with some uh, bright colors. So there we go. So 
So as you know, you gotta be to back up what your technology can do. I just wanna throw a few videos in there real quick. Black screens by far are better than white screens. A white screen cannot produce contrast. You can't get contrast from a white screen. Contrast is everything when it comes to a screen. You have to have it. Like I said, why would OLED, why would LG and, and all these big companies invest so much money into a black screen if it wasn't, if it wasn't worth it? Why? OLED TVs are insanely expensive. You know how much one of those bad boys cost? They are, it's, you know, there's a reason why. That screen produces 100% black contrast. Watch anything. Anything you watch involves contrast. Anything and everything, just about everything you watch has black in it. A white screen can't do it. That's why if you watch a demonstration on the white screen, the colors are faded, it's washed out. It doesn't make a difference exactly what kind of projector you have. I have got, I've done... Uh, jobs for churches that were using 7,000 lumen projectors and they couldn't pull the image up on a white screen. If that was the case, if a white screen was so advanced, then you wouldn't be, you'd be paying more for it. You'd be paying more. Why is a white screen so cheap? I right here, let me tell you something real quick. This right here, as I said before, is a screen I purchased off eBay. It's a 92 inch, 169 motorized projection screen i paid 68 dollars for it because it's white now if that screen was black or if it was dark gray do you know how much that screen would have cost me a couple of grand that's what it cost me if you take the elite i don't know if any of you guys know about the elite dark star 9 elite makes a screen called the dark star 9 it's one of their flagships they have a couple flagship projection screens you guys are used to seeing probably some of you are probably used to seeing the more silver or more lighter screens or white screens they design. Those are the cheaper ones. But look up something called the Dark Star 9. It's a 0 0.9 gain. That screen right there would cost you $3,000 just for a 100 inch. Three grand just for a 100 inch screen. So keep in mind, Elite has screens called the Yardmaster, all these screens they have. Those are cheap screens, four or $500. That's a cheap screen. That's one of their bottom, their bottom dollar screens. But if you want one of their high-tech screens, you're going to pay some great, some money. Black Diamond? Oh, where did, where did it begin? This screens cost five grand. It's $5,000 for that screen. There's a reason why that screen costs five grand. Look at the color of it. It's not white. It's designed to pull contrast. It's designed to pull color. That's why these darker screens will always cost more. But here it is, our technology, and this is why big companies don't like us, we can come on air and produce a screen paint that's ultra short throw. You can take it outside if you want to. You can paint it on anything you want. You can go to Amazon right now or eBay and buy yourself a cheap $68 screen coated with our technology, and that would cost you 10 times less than five grand. So people say, well, your paint's too expensive. $274 for a screen paint that can do ultra short throw, it can do the, the same thing as these high end screens on the market can do. And I can do it on a cheap 1100 lumen projector at 720p, which I have demonstrations to back that up on live. I can do it in a fully lit environment. I can do it outside. Let me know the last time you've seen any one of those um, uh, companies like Black Diamond or Elite Screen say, hey, guess what? We're gonna take the screen here and we're gonna take it out there and show you a demonstration at four o'clock in the evening. Not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. That's what I explained to you. It's not gonna happen. So you're paying for a screen that's a 100 inch, and that if you want to go bigger, you're just gonna have to pay more money to get a bigger screen. But with this technology, you can coat anything you want. You can build and design your own projection screen. Heck, you can go to Home Depot and get yourself a piece of plywood and coat that. Now look at the colors here that we have there. And let's scroll over to our white wall. If I can get my, there we go. We're inching over slowly. Slowly, there we go. So think about that. It's not a lot of money when you consider the fact that if you want that kind of technology, that you're gonna have to spend 
thousands of dollars just to have a screen like that. When we had that technology you're already here and you can go in from one court, you got an option. I can go to 100 inch to 120 inch. Do you have any idea what a 120 inch screen costs and one of those levels of technology? Heck, a DMP Supernova at 180 inches would cost you $18,000. $18,000. That's what it would cost you. See the color pop? Brighter colors, better greens. That's what you get. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a couple emails. I'm going to get a couple emails over this. I always do. I'm going to get a few emails from somebody saying, hey, look, you know, from some big company screaming and yelling at me, telling me to keep my mouth shut. Don't say anything about their product. Don't mention their name. Blah, 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 blah. I've been through it before a dozen times. So if you don't hear me mention a company's name, then you know exactly what just happened. So like I said, I, I, I go to, I have a lot of forum sites that I belong to on Facebook. And I see these people who don't want to spend that kind of money. They don't want to spend five grand for a screen. Nobody wants to. And keep in mind, I'm showing you technology here that has the ability to outperform white screens and gray screens. That if you decide that, hey, look, you know what? I want to put a screen in my living room and I want to put one out on my deck. I want to put one in the backyard. You can do that with this technology instead of you basically going out and spending money for a screen that's only designed for the inside. So you can spend five grand for a screen for the inside. Then you got to turn around. You got to pay another maybe what? Two, three hundred bucks for a white screen because I've never seen a black outdoor screen or even a gray one. So you got to spend money for that and stick that screen out there. Buy a gallon of our technology. And you can go paint a screen in here. You can paint a screen out there if you want. Or you can just go over to eBay, buy yourself a cheap fixed frame screen. I think they got them over there. You can get 150 inch over at eBay. I know Amazon has one for around two or three hundred bucks. You can get 150 inch. Maybe like no no, you can get you probably about two hundred bucks. Two hundred bucks, you can get 150 inch. Um, you can get 150 inch um, uh, fixed frame screen. You can get one from over there for that price. Um, and then you code it with our technology. And you come out cheaper than trying to get a screen that has a darker color that's gonna cost you a couple grand. I guarantee you, bar none. You can't go to Elite Screens, you can't go to DMP Supernova, you can't go to Daylight Screens, you can't go to none of those companies and try to get a black or dark gray screen that's not gonna cost you three grand and up. I guarantee you. Not at 120 inches. My screen right here is 120 inch. Not at 120 inch. You're gonna pay. Hey, think about it. That's 100 inch. It's gonna cost you three grand. You know. Think what you're gonna pay for 120 inch. I think SL screens at 120 inch are 15 grand. And this is not my projector is non 4K. This is a 1080p projector. Well, 1920 by 1200, a little bit, bit more, but it's not 4K. Let's do something with, let's see, I got something else here I want to do real quick uh, before I sign up here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I do. I really appreciate that. When somebody compliments me on my work, I really appreciate it. I mean, it, it's not easy. It wasn't easy. It took me 11 years of, and I trust me, I did design light gray screen paints. I've done this already, you know what I mean? But... When I started getting into black technology, I realized there was just something different about it, and I kind of stuck with it. You know what I mean? I got a lot of ridicule over it. Trust me, you have no idea. I've been banned from ABS forums. I think four or five times I've been banned from them. They just don't like me over there. But I've been banned from ABS forums a few times, uh, trying to introduce, trying to get black technology out there. And I've been Telling people have been telling me, no, it's not this and it's not that, and you can't do this and can't do that. All right, so that right there is a piece of plexiglass we have right there. 
Um, next demonstration, probably later on today, um, I'm going to coat that with our screen paint. We're going to do a demonstration inside and outside. I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually coat plexiglass. Um, also, too, uh, some recap on the screen paint. Uh, we are bringing back out the blackout cloths. It was a company I was dealing with. Um, I wasn't too happy about the blackout cloth that they had because they changed it. And one of the things I hate the most is when I'm giving out free blackout cloth for their screen paint, I don't like the fact that when a company we're doing business with, somewhere along the line changes it, and I knew the texture was funny. It just wasn't right when I stretched it over a screen it kind of buckled a little bit so I was like no we're not going to deal with this anymore so we did find uh, right now this screen is actually made out of canvas believe it or not this is an actual canvas screen so we found this material it's called an artist canvas um we are going to start packing that with the screen paint it is a 9 by 12 so that's plenty of room to build whatever you want and one thing i like about the artist canvas is the fact that it doesn't have seams in the middle of the screen which i hate the most it doesn't have holes or imperfections in the surface it's nice and smooth let me see if i can come over here and show you so you can see that is canvas the screen is actually made out of canvas so the trick of doing a canvas screen is very easy. Um, you want to make sure that when you, when you paint the screen, you want to coat it with any form of primer. It can be regular house paint. doesn't make a difference. All you're doing is just laying a foundation. So when you apply our technology to it, it comes out a lot smoother. Well, if you got one of those messed up blackout cloths, you send me your email. And what I'll do is, I'll go in and I'll basically send you the email, send you the uh, blackout cloth. But just in case, we will match your email with our basically PayPal records that will let us know that if an order was actually uh, um, um, processed uh, through our company. Because we've had people in the past have said that they bought products from us and haven't. Keep in mind when you order off the website, there's a server that basically picks up your information. Not a now keep in mind we can't see all your information but you know how it works when you go to amazon and that's how we're able to take your email address we can go into paypal and we can look through the search engine if you did make an order it will pop up so just to let you know that ahead of time so if you did make if you did purchase that uh that keep in mind it's free and you're not paying anything for the blackout cloth it's free but anyway um that particular blackout cloth that we had the problem with, we basically had a bunch of intro. I think only two of them went out, and that's it. Uh, we tested our stuff because, like I said, when I popped the bag, it had a funny kind of texture to it. I didn't like it. I built the screen and coated it, and we saw the reactions. So only two of them went out. So we do have those two individuals. Um, if you do have that, and we basically match your records, then, like I said, I'll send it out to you for free. It's not a problem. We give it out for free anyway. Why would I basically fight you on something we give you for free? Let me, uh, hold on for a minute. Let me get my lights on because I'm doing all this in the dark. It's bugging the crap out of me. And you want to see something? Woo! There's my baby right there. I love that screen. That's my 180 inch. I mean, sorry. That is a hundred and, that's 126 inch. I'm cleaning the house right now. I worked it the day. This is out on the deck. That is my 100 inch on the deck. I think I have got keys on me. Yes. I never walk around with keys on. Now it's, it depends on when you're dealing with uh, canvas, there's two types of canvas. I did this video already on two types of canvas. Now, if you get the painter's canvas that Home Depot makes, oops, I'm going to set on my surge protector. If you make, uh, if you get the, um, if you get the uh, canvas that Home Depot makes, it does have a texture to it. It does. But when you're dealing with artist canvas and, and um, artist canvas and, uh, and, and drop cloth canvas is two different things. Trust me, it's two different things. I did a video on it. I got to find it so I can show you the difference between the two. When you're dealing with painter's canvas, you will have, this is painter's canvas. I think this is painter's canvas, right? I'm not sure. No, because the seams are on the outside. This is why it's not painter canvas. I have two straight ca uh, canvas. But a painter's canvas has um, it has seams throughout the entire screen. A lot of you not. You can go there. I went there one time and I got a screen 
that a surface that was about uh, 12 feet, no, nine feet by 12 feet, and it had a seam right down the middle of it, like three or four seams. And then the material is really rough. It has um, all kinds of threads coming out of it. it. It's really, 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 really like a nasty, rough piece of surface because it's just designed for something for you to just drop on the ground and just paint over top of it. That's what's designed for you to mess it up. But a painter's canvas is different. A painter's canvas is smooth. It's slick. It has the seams around the edge. That's because that's designed for someone. It, when you paint a um, when you paint a portrait, you build. Some people do it by scratch. They build their frame and they take the canvas and they stretch it around the frame. And they staple it down. That surface has to be flat. And then they prime that surface and then they apply their oil paints to it. That's how they do it. So that surface has to be smooth because if there's any lines or strings hanging out of it, that disrupts the picture quality on what the artist is trying to do. That's what we figured out when I ordered this, uh, this, um, the, I ordered this, uh, I hit my surger. I ordered this, um, this, uh, this, uh, surface from Amazon and it said artist, um, 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 artist canvas. That's what I ordered. And when I got this stuff out, I stretched it over the front, it came out super smooth. I said, you know what? This is what I gotta start buying. So, from now on, that's what we're gonna start packing. But when I came back to the company to try to buy more of Amazon, they were out, they were out. They had no more left, they were gone. So, I said, you know what? I'll just wait a bit, which I did. And then a couple of days later, um, they got more. So I contacted the company, got a chance to talk to them, sent them over some information on my company. So look, we'll buy bulks of it from you if you can give us a discount. And voila, we have a discount and we have a deal with this company. So now we can pack in canvas, this smooth, beautiful canvas, so you can have it for your screen for free. You're not paying for this. Keep in mind, if you buy a screen paint material, you still got to figure out what you're going to paint it on. And some of us, some people rent, some people own. Now, if you rent and basically your landlord tells you, hey, look, you can't paint on the walls, then where else are you going to put your screen? So keep in mind with the free surface, you could go to Home Depot, get yourself a couple strips of wood, build your own frame, much like an artist does, and basically design your own screen without the worry of painting on your wall and basically having your landlord screen down your throat. And it comes free. Instead of you going to... Uh, Amazon or eBay and paying for blackout cloth that's probably for that size, a 9 by 12 probably cost you 80 bucks. $80. So think about it. You get it for free. All right. Uh, let's go pop outside. I hope my camera does not shut off, and I hope it doesn't. But I want to show you some of the screens I have outside. This I got the big 180. Oh, this right here, I'll show you this later on. This is a screen made out of... Uh, it's made out of, um, hold on, I can show you now. This is made out of a screen. So this is a screen that I got and I actually coated it with the black technology. Kind of cool, huh? Is that cool or what? Yeah, it's all kinds of cool stuff you can do with this technology. Now, we also developed a front and rear version of the technology. It's called Invisible. It's an invisible technology. This is it right here. Let me see if I can grab this one arm because this screen is kind of heavy. Do, 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 do. This screen was actually made out of that cheap plastic. You know that cheap plastic that you find at Home Depot for doing your windows? This is what the screen was made out of. I just did it for fun to see if I, what I could get away with. But this is a front and rear screen that I developed and it's called Invisible, I think it's called uh, Supreme 8 Invisible Black. I think that's what it's called. It's an invisible screen. But it has front and rear technology. But if you Lean against the wall, you can't look through it. But it can transfer light through it. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's go try it outside. I'll show you the big 180. When I built this, my neighbors were like, whoa. It's the biggest projection screen I built outside. 
Got a lot of cool stuff going on outside. This is my outdoor workshop. It's probably colder than a mother jumper out here. Ooh, it is cold. Right, this is where I do a lot of my work at. That is the uh, screen stand that I built for I have a golf course in the back of my house. And no, I've never been hit with a golf ball, not yet. Be sure one's coming soon. But anyway, this right here is the stand that I built for my uh, motorized projection screen right here. Very easy stand to build right there. And the buckets are actually bolted, they're bolted down to this, to the brake. So the cool thing about this is when I built this stand is the fact that I made it so I can empty things out of the bucket. If I put pure cement in there and water was too light, so if I put pure cement in there and I filled that up, the problem I would have is the fact that anytime I try to move this thing, or if I, you know, want to take it, move it from A to B in the yard, um, I would have a problem because the cement would weigh it down. So the buckets are actually bolted down to the frame, and that allows me to take the bricks out and move it around at will. Now, when I put it together, um, I noticed that when the screen would drop down, I have LED lights up there too. The screen, when it would drop down, when the wind would come through, it would push the screen back and forth. So this right here is just an everyday kind of a uh, blackout cloth material and what I did was to make sure the material does not mold or does not have any form of mildew I actually use a weather coating so this is actually this color this is actually an outdoor weather coating to keep the wood from buckling or, or basically deteriorating and I use the same coating on here not only does it basically weatherproof the material but also stiffens the material so basically the wind can't push through and move the screen back and forth Oh yeah, I built this. I got to do some blueprints. I think on the website, I'm going to do some blueprints on how to build your own motorized projection screen stand. Now, over here, that's the big boy. This is something else. This is another project I'm working on. This is a rear projection screen box that I'm building right here. That's another project I'm working on. So in this right here, I'm going to have a stand in there and I'm going to set an ultra short though projector there and we're going to put a top on this. All this is going to be boxed in so I can have this out in the winter time. So all this is going to be boxed off. The projector is going to be completely protected and I'm going to have a stand in here that allow me to set an ultra short though in there and just have all this boxed off. Now I may change this over, take all this off, rip this off. And I'm going to change all this over to black because I just want a, just a jet black box out here. That's what I want. I'm going to sit it right in the middle of the snow. And we're going to use our invisible black technology. We'll take our ultra short though and to build a stand. It's going to sit about right there. And I'm going to be the projecting image here on this strange black cube in the middle of all this snow. A lot of projects I'm working on, people. Ugh, so I built this about last month but I haven't got around to it and this right here is the 180 inch 16 9 it's the giant screen I built I actually had to attach this thing into the deck so it's actually attached to the deck and here's the wooden frame and I use screws to attach my to my grommets there's the back of it and how it's designed and how it's built and that's also coated with our technology right there and keep in mind like i said our stuff is weatherproof so you know consider the fact that this stuff has been sitting out here splattered in mud i had rain all kinds of crap hit it and if you look at it it doesn't crack or peel it sits out here in all the elements our stuff is fully weatherproof so if you want to use this for your business for commercial use outside, you can because you don't have to worry about the product cracking or peeling because, you know, it's out here taking a beating every day. You know what I mean? So right now we're in the middle of November and it's cold. All right, so someone just comment about wanting the screen paint. Um, I will put a link in the video description. That way you can get the paint. Um, let's see. All right, so um, I'll uh, put a link in the comments section where you can actually get the paint at, um, and you can get it from there. Let me see and go back here for a minute. Let's pull up uh, NFL highlights. Boy, it's colder. Whew, it's cold outside. Man, I was looking at my driveway. I'm literally going to put in a bobsled track. <laughs> a lot of you not. I'm not playing with you. 
I'm putting in a bobsled track right in the backyard. Because I got the driveway slopes down and they, I could, I, I'm just got some ideas popping through my head on what I'm going to do with that. <coughs> Shouldn't be out there to begin with because I got a cold. I'm still fighting through this freaking cold of mine. All right. I like doing these demonstrations. Lights on. And keep in mind, football is not a movie, right? It's in sports. So keep in mind, come Super Bowl, are you going to be sitting in the dark with your family? You're going to have your lights on. That's why I do these demonstrations. You see that you don't have to sit in the dark just because you're watching the game with your friends and family. You want to be set the lights on. Kind of like there. Let's go in. Let's take this off. We'll take that off in the beginning. We'll disconnect from there. We will go into um, this right here. Um, let me see. Let me go upstairs. I'm switching this up to my screen upstairs. Because as I said before, that the screen paint is ultra short though compatible. So upstairs we have the Optima GT5500. I'm going to clean the leaves off the deck too. Let's see what we got going on here. That's my Optima GT5500 right there, ultra short throw. I'll tell you something, this is cool. I haven't had a chance to use this yet. Full size popcorn maker. Have not had a chance to play with this thing yet. I will get a chance once we have the family come over. There's my Optima powering on. I think my sound bar is running. Okay. No, projector's still warming up. That's the only thing I don't really like too much about the Optima GT55 Ultra Short Throws is that it does take a while for the projector to, to, um, to brighten up a bit. And that's the only thing I don't like about it. Where my Sony downstairs, I turn that thing on and BAM! It's on, just like that. I've done this quite a few times. So you can see that the paint is ultra short though compatible. Just walking around, you can see that the screen picks up anywhere I move in the environment. That screen is supposed to pull up. Ugh. All right, well, I gotta go. Uh, any information that you may need uh, for the screen paint, I will put that at the bottom of the comments section. Thank you for your time. I gotta go and God bless. Oh, my screen was blinking there for a minute. Did you sell that? I had to come back and show you that. No, it's, it's the video. My projector's not going out. I hope not. I paid $1,100 for this thing. But let me get out of here real quick. Okay, I gotta go and God bless.